How's it going guys? It is Fake Oak. I'm actually once again with another Legends of Runeterra deck guide. We're going to help you become a Runeterra pro. We're going to teach you how to play scouts. I have nearly 100 games with this deck for this season. We're holding a 65% win rate and we managed to reach Masters and beyond. This deck has been working fantastic. It, it come in right before the patch as this deck was performing very well against Shadow Wilds ramp decks because of your combat tricks. Ranger's Resolve is generally super insane against them, as well as just the ability to pursuit against them is absolutely game breaking for them because they have to play as like very expensive cards and you're just kind of going wide against them and protecting your units that they just can't keep up with the pressure. So let's talk about the cards that we have here today. In my variant, I'm going to be running Quinn as my champion cards, as well as Misfortune. Misfortune being definitely the most important card for this deck. Some lists are going to use Lucian, some lists are not going to use Quinn. It's fine. I think Quinn's a fantastic addition. If you want to play this style, it's going to be fine. If you like Quinn, you want to play a deck with Quinn, this is the one for you. This variant, I'm also going to use Bannerman. This is my preference. There's a few different decks out there. This deck's going to generally play out very much the same. Three Genevieve. Uh, Genevieve is definitely one of the most powerful cards for this deck. Even though it got nerfed, the card is still absolutely fantastic. Three Quinn, three Bannerman. Two reposts for some combat tricks that I prefer to use. Three Grizzled Rangers. Some lists do not use Grizzled Rangers. I think Grizzled Ranger is absolutely insane. I can't think of a reason why I wouldn't want to play Grizzled Ranger in my scouts deck. Three Relentless Pursuit. Three Misfortune. Three Laurent Protege. The challenging units are kind of really OP. Uh, two Sharp Sight for me. Three Bright Steel Protector. Three Blinding Assault. Blinding Assault's low key. Do not sleep on it. Three Rangers Resolve. Uh, three Fleetwood Tracker and three Cithria of the Cloudfield. Deck strategy. So the deck basically is most similar to an aggro deck where you're going to look for those smoking plays. You're going to look for those like really powerful events for shoots so you can push more damage. Have the aggro mindset. You're going to be able to power this deck very effectively. The thing is, it's all through board state. So it's very important that you look for those like very favorable trades, very good combat trick situations like Rangers Resolve against your opponent's removal, as well as Bright Steel Protector being able to protect your units, even sometimes on your opponent's off turn. Quick tip, uh, depending if they're a type of deck that has removal to your misfortune and they don't do it immediately, you punish them by playing your Bright Steel Protector over your MF and you can protect it in a lot of situations where your opponent was kind of going to play some, pardon me, they were going to play some stuff and then remove Misfortune, but they didn't do it straight away, so now you get to protect it with Barrier, and then maybe you draw into some more combat tricks. It's a good way for, for punishing them. But yeah, have the aggro mindset. You're going to play this deck very effectively. It's a little bit, it's a little bit tricky because you have to kind of like min-max your resources and like know when to just like not trade or not attack as well is very important. But that's something you'll kind of figure out over time. Just have the mindset that you're looking to try and get as much value from every card as possible. And that should hopefully lead the way for you. We lost our MF in this game too, but we still managed to win. So it was fantastic. So uh, protecting MF is important. In some matchups, it's very important that you do. In some matchups, it's a little bit more lenient. Now, in terms of the matchup spread, I would say your scouts doesn't truly have a counter. There's some decks that could do pretty, like, I guess pretty well into it if they remove your stuff on curve against some solo control decks. But in general, with the combat tricks that you have, it can be quite difficult. And like, unless they have the exact answers every turn on the spot, then like they're just, you're gonna have a really good shot of winning. That's what I guess I mean to say. So for the Mulligan, I'm actually going to utilize Mobilitics website to test out some starting hands. We have the starting hand simulator. It's gonna be nice for you guys to visually see uh, what cards I do choose to get rid of or keep and in general I will say that one drops are going to be obviously a fantastic keep most of the time with a hand like this I probably just want to get rid of Laurent Rangers and Pursuit in hopes that we find ideally Misfortune or something to play on turn two so let's see how the hand turns out we found multiple one drops in a sharp side pretty nice to have some combat tricks here so yeah with a hand like this uh trying to protect your units is going to be key so uh, try not to trade them off as you try and look for hopefully in the next couple turns uh, Misfortune Even Bannerman in a lot of matchups Try not like you can even ignore attacking your opponent sometimes if they can trade off your units in some matchups Another starting hand here uh, Misfortune is going to be a keep and I think everything else is going to be kicked as we look for the curve as we look for the combat tricks uh, Fantastic this hand looks really powerful so with the Bannerman in hand, with a hand like this, I like, I'm going to play Fleetwood Tracker turn one. Um, if my opponent plays something, I probably don't want to trade. 
I want to keep my units alive as I curve into Misfortune and try and get value or even into Bannerman. So yeah, in a lot of matchups, it's not about trying to like fight for the board really aggressively. You can sacrifice some of your Nexus HP to protect your units as you get more value from them later. Another hand here, uh, Misfortune. I'm always going to keep it. Like you're going to see this like Misfortune is going to be a huge activator for this deck and not finding it feels really bad. So you always want to keep Misfortune. That's going to be one of my greatest tips, I think, for this deck that might... It might not be as well known for a lot of people because like obviously we want to find that one drop and stuff, but what you really want to find in this deck is Misfortune. And you're going to have a pretty good chance of finding a one or a two drop. So there we go. This hand looks like we found double Misfortune. That's, you know, it feels bad, but at least we have one, which is really important. Again, with this hand, we play Fleetwood Tracker turn one. We'll avoid trying to trade off our units. We'll get the free damage if we can, if our opponent doesn't play anything. But yeah, protect your units, get the Misfortune, get the value from the Fleetwood Tracker, and then go from there. Another hand here, uh, pretty easy mulligan. I'd say with this kind of hand, I might keep the Bannerman. We've got the Fleetwood Tracker into Protected Turn 2. If we're attacking evens, that's fantastic. Protect our units, uh, trade off your units if we can, get the Bannerman. Uh, just one Bannerman, don't keep two. Uh, another uh, unit here, so that's pretty fantastic. But yeah, you can see it's pretty simple. Try and look for the curve. Uh, Misfortune is going to be a keep 100% of the time. That's just my personal opinion. People might beg to differ. I think Misfortune is insane for this deck. I did mention matchups, so I think it's very important that I actually do go into detail about most of the common matchups you'll see and my thoughts on like how the deck's going to perform. And although I'm not in, in total agreement of a lot of uh, tier lists because it's very, you know, it's very... I can't say personal opinion because there's statistics behind it, but it's very it's very broad and the kind it's very lenient when we do these uh, tier lists. But let's talk about some of the common matchups and my thoughts on the deck and its performance. Against Pirate Aggro, it's pretty much just a race, okay? So not that we're seeing Pirate Aggro a lot right now, but it's definitely probably going to be a popular deck very shortly. Scouts can actually beat this deck. I wouldn't say it's unfavored. I'd say it's pretty much 50-50. You've just got to play a better game than your opponent and draw better. Against Discard Aggro, it's very much the same. I would say Scouts is a little bit more favored against Discard Aggro, just because unless they clear your MF on Curve, they're going to have a hard time in terms of the value that you're going to get because their only true removal is like challenging with their flame chompers or using get excited on your stuff which slows their tempo down a lot as long as you can find misfortune in this matchup you're going to have a fantastic time against tom raka i've played at this i've played this matchup a few ends on both sides and the issue is like does the tom raka deck have the answers on the spot because if they don't, you can take over with scouts and try and like get your rangers resolve up and trade into them. You really want to find Genevieve on curve in this matchup very desperately so you can trade off the units. Um, if you have a fantastic opener, yeah, I I'll, would I'll probably say out of 100 games, Tarm Rucker might win more. I would say it's 60-40 maybe. I would say scouts maybe just a little bit underperforms against this deck even though it seems like we should do pretty well. Uh, against Lee Sin Targon, now this is surprisingly, Scouts have been doing very well for me against Lee Sin, even before the nerfs. Um, scouts just can just literally just pressure them down. We are an aggro deck essentially, right? So like not running cards like single combat and stuff like that is actually very huge for us against a deck like this. I like Scouts a lot into Lee Sin and Targon. Against Swain TF, I played this matchup a few times. Uh, Rangers Resolve is just absolutely fantastic against Make It Rain. Played this matchup a few times today, actually, and uh, I won. I won one, no, I lost once against the same player, against Epauto, which is top uh, Legends master player right now in NA. And yeah, Rangers Resolve pretty much blows out a lot of the players. You try and protect your units as you curve out, hopefully, into Bannerman. Misfortune's not super important for this one, as what is more important is the ability to go wide and then protect our units and buff them and then pursuit. Misfortune is obviously going to be very useful, but yeah. Against War Mothers, we just stomp. We just stomp against War Mothers, guys. That's why scouts kind of like started appearing in the meta. Our ability to Rangers Resolve, their Avalanche and their Withering Whales and their Vile Feast and Grasp 
Rangers resolve, this blows out this deck completely, and then so does Relentless Pursuit the rally against them as they try and play his very expensive cards and you go wide. Yeah, in general you should be super favored against War Mother. Um just yeah. It, there's not much else to say. Should be the same against Asol Ramp as well. I would say maybe the Asol Ramp is a little bit more favored because like we're we're countering the removal from War Mothers, but this deck doesn't really just one run removal, right? So they're, they're just going to keep ramping faster. If they ramp fast enough, they can beat us. But it's a similar story. Um, you can like uh, Rangers resolve the Avalanche as well as the ability to like, you know, go wide and then play Relentless Pursuit. Um, I haven't really seen Fiora Shen too often. Mirror matchup is a mirror matchup. Leona Lux, I haven't really seen. Uh, Mid-range Frostbite, I think Scouts kind of do get a little bit dumpstered by this deck. We're very susceptible to a lot of their removal and their combat tricks, so I would say actually mid-range Frostbite is pretty powerful against Scouts, so if you are facing a tremendous amount of Scout decks at the moment, then you should definitely consider picking up mid-range Frostbite. I would say that it's gonna, deck's going to do pretty well against it most of the time. Um, I guess we don't see Endure very often, but I would say... In, I, I don't see any reason why Endure wouldn't perform pretty well against Scouts, so... Not seeing this too often is kind of like, yeah, if their hand is kind of like a bit more clunky and they have mostly like unspeakable horrors or vile feasts and like they haven't got the player caretaker on curve, you might be able to beat them up. Uh, deep, we should be able to beat them up most of the time as well. Nightfall is like a 50-50. It's about who gets the better curve. And against Lidro Stoll, uh, for similar reasons as described above with the other, uh, sorry, Shadow Wilds and Freehold deck, I would say that... Uh, Scouts is going to perform very well against them. And Poro Discard and Discard Agro are pretty much the same deck, right? Uh, Shivana Midrange, I don't really consider this a matchup. I would say that Scouts is just strictly a better version of this deck. Okay, guys, so let's go have a game versus Apato. I think that's how it's pronounced. Rank 1 NA server, very good player. Playing some TF Swain. Obviously, we're on the Scouts. It's going to showcase some of the mechanics for the deck piloting. And yeah, I just want to add 81.2% of you guys are not subscribed to the YouTube channel. Uh, if anybody's coming here quite regularly or it's your first time here, you're enjoying the Runeterra videos, please consider subscribing. It's going to be a huge support for me, guys. We're going to try and aim for 2,000 subs by the end of the year. We're currently sitting at 1.5k, so yeah. Thanks for the support as always. Glad to be back. Have a good day. I mean, I've been playing Mana decks for a while. It's not uncommon to see me playing Mana decks. This is our number one. I'm pretty sure it Ipato is number one on the server. Yep, Laverne's, yep, I, I hear that. I think scouts are really good into Swain. Fakie also made meta decks. Uh, I guess you could say that. Oh, a good example of a Blinding Assault play. This turn, you don't play Blinding Assault. You don't play Blinding Assault here. You chill and you pass. Because your opponent has Make It Rain. Now we can play it. I made one deck that wasn't really meta. It did get popular though. Let's see the make it rain, dude. You know you want to. You can't you can't deny this make it rain. It looks so spectacular. <laughs> Bird gang, rise up. I hear you, uranium. I hear you. We definitely want to scout. I mean, he can develop here, but I think I need to be—I need to be aggressive, right? As I said earlier, in some games you can pass, in other matches, matchups you can't pass. What would suck is like an immediate make it rain opener. I need to play Bannerman. Let me play Bannerman. Don't play Make It Rain. Let me Bannerman.
Yo, what's up, showstopper? I can I can fully grade out here. I can like to the next level grade out. Let's be super greedy. Ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's miss some boots up. How's the master's grind? Yeah, it's it's gone pretty good, man. One banner, one destiny. Oh, so strong. So strong. Mr. Rank 1 on the server? I'm always a no. Huh? Something for all. So that's probably a uh, ravenous flock for sure. He's got ravenous flock, I think. And so this keeps him alive. He's still in a pretty bad spot though. He's still in a very bad spot. We're, we're one rally away from winning this game. One well, uh, rally. Wally? I finally caught up from Silver. Let's go, Showstopper. Now, do I be greedy here? I think protecting my wide board's kind of important. Alternatively, I can just let this happen. I'm a people person. And then play Genevieve. I'll defend these boys to the end. Shit! House spider! No! House spider! That's gonna cock me a little bit. House spider is insanely good for him here. How do I win this game? I need to like multiple rally against him. And hopefully no arachnoid sentry. Dude, he's actually insane. Like, where's misfortune? It's okay, we're still here. I'm still in the game. It is losable from this position though. It is losable. It is very much losable from this position. I just need to get wide enough on the board. That house spider was super clutch for him. Have I played Misfortune this game? No, I have not. Let's do this. I need to be careful of Riptide Rex. I might sharp sight this. Yo, what's up, Sarai? How you going, man? Ah, uh, thanks for the welcome back. So we're going to sharp sight with the 3-2 here, I think. So we can play around Noxian further. I just need to go wide enough, boys. Yes, dude. Oh, that's Pog. I played the Grizzled Ranger in case he had Make It Rain to make his Noxian Guillotine worse. All right, that should be a win now. Dude, that's so crazy. Read like a textbook, my dude. And I'm pretty sure you just open here, right?
Yeah, that uh, Grizzled Ranger play was nuts. I don't think there's a way for him to survive here. I am now rank one. Easy. Have you tried this deck with Lucian? I have not, although I have seen that version. Bro, I'm actually, I am actually peaking, dude. This is the highest LP for the season. How was your break, fam? It was really good. It was um very, very necessary. I'm also going to catch up with my mother in a couple of days, so I'm pretty excited for that. Um, you're a genius. Yeah, I think if anybody did notice what I did there was that he had the Noxie and Guillotine activated. I realized he was probably going to have Make It Rain in hand so he can get some value by getting my Genevieve. I played Grizzled Ranger on purpose strictly to make his Make It Rain possibly be really bad, which it ended up being literally the worst for him. And then I was able to get the unit from Grizzled Ranger to stay wider on the board and then play Batman afterwards and that wrapped up the game. Like even if it hit Genevieve, if it hits the Grizzled Ranger as well as the other units, then it gets really worse for him. So that was really good.